Just barely making their December release date, Apple has finally released the brand new Mac Pro. So if Santa was exceptionally good to you, leaving you a post-holiday surplus of anywhere in the range of three to $11,000, you can pick one up for yourself. We got ours first thing this morning and put it directly on our teardown table. Let's tear this tube down. Hi, I'm Gwendolyn with iFixit, and today we're tearing down the brand new Mac Pro. This is a landmark release for Apple, as it's not only their first machine assembled entirely in the United States, it's also the first major redesign of the Pro line since 2006. And what a major redesign it is. Visually, the new Mac Pro is a radical departure from the previous versions of the Mac Pro and desktop computing as a whole, replacing the standard rectangular desktop design with a super sleek and shiny cylinder. This new Mac Pro measures in at 200 151.46 millimeters in height, 167.64 millimeters in diameter, and a super light 4.9 kilograms in weight. On the back or around the bend, I guess, you can see all the available connections, which consist of six Thunderbolt 2 ports, four USB 3 ports, HDMI, and dual gigabit ethernet ports. It also has the standard 3.5 millimeter speaker and headphone jack. We've only just begun and we're already loving the opening process. With the flick of a switch, the encasement tube is off and now we get our first look inside. Isn't that nice? The first chamber reveals so much goodness when we find vertical RAM slots at either side of the IO panel. And the great news keeps coming, this RAM is super easy to access and replace. Our baseline unit came with 12 gigabytes of RAM in the form of three four gigabyte DDR3L SD RAM chips. You could, however, max out your RAM at 64 gigabytes using four 16 gigabyte chips. After the RAM, we check out the SSD assembly that is held in place by only one non-proprietary T8 screw. Our Mac shipped with a 256 gigabyte SSD manufactured by Samsung. But if you have an additional $800, you can max out your storage at one terabyte. With the SSD removed, we turn our attention to the fan. That's right, I said fan, not fans. The Mac Pro cools all of its high-end tech with a single large fan that pulls air from under the case through the core and out the top. So make sure you don't put anything on top of your Pro or you'll block its efficient and surprisingly quiet cooling system. Speaking of cooling, the Mac Pro uses a huge triangular heatsink that is shared by two graphics cards. And to get those cards off, we started by disconnecting the data connectors at the bottom of the boards. Once we removed the eight T10 screws holding on the heatsink clamps, the cards came right off. Our Mac Pro came with dual AMD Fire Pro D300 GPUs with two gigabytes of GDDR5 VRAM each. As we take off the daughter board, we marvel at the novel disc shape. It's not every day you get to see a round circuit board. And once we pull back the small grill, we find where Apple has hidden the power supply. With the power supply and IO board removed, we uncover the third side of the triangular heatsink, and on it, we find the logic board. Removing the logic board, we find the CPU stuck to the heatsink. The thermal compound kept the CPU stuck behind when we pulled the logic board away. The fact that the CPU hasn't been integrated into the logic board makes replacing or upgrading the CPU only a realistic possibility. Our Mac Pro came with a 3.7 GHz quad-core Intel Xeon E5 processor. Lastly, we separated the port board from the power supply. It seems all the available ports have been consolidated into one card, so if one of your USB or Thunderbolt ports goes bad, you'll need to replace all the ports on your machine to fix it. We've come to the end of our teardown, which means it's time to talk repairability. At iFixit, it's our mission to teach people how to repair everything, so we give every gadget we tear down a repairability score between one and 10. 10 being the easiest to repair and one being the most difficult. The late 2013 Mac Pro got a eight out of 10, and here's why. On the upside, for being so compact, the design is surprisingly modular and easy to disassemble. Non-proprietary Torx screws are used throughout and several components can be replaced independently. The easily opened case is designed to make RAM upgrades a snap. The fan is easy to access and replace. And while it will require a bit of digging, the CPU is user replaceable. But on the downside, because of some proprietary new connectors and tight cable routing, working on this device without a repair manual will be tricky and risky for a $3,000 machine. For the complete teardown, including tons of beautiful high quality images, head on over to ifixit.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to stay up to date on all our latest teardowns and repair videos. You can follow us on Twitter at ifixit and give us a like on Facebook at facebook.com ifixit.